All right, I want to talk about base 64. Um, it's a very important topic. If you ever wanted to do something like save a binary file inside of an XML file or a JSON file or be able to uh, pass it onto the server as a string, base 64 is what you need to understand. So what is it? Well, it's rendered as text. So you can take some binary information and then represent it as a string of characters. And the characters are made up of the values 0 through 63. So there's 64 different values. And as far as when it's displayed on the screen, what you're getting is capital A to, oh, sorry, that should be Z, not B. Uh, capital A to Z, lowercase a to Z. There we go. Um, lowercase a to z, 0 through 9, the plus and the forward slash. Those characters. So all this information is going to be rendered as a string of these characters. So how does it work? Well, it takes all of your information, so your binary file. It reads all the data inside there, and it takes it in three byte chunks. So there's eight bits in a byte, so 24 bits. 24 bits at a time. It takes it in chunks like that. It takes the 24. It breaks it into four groups of six bits. If you have six bits like this, the biggest number that you can get to is 63. So base 64. There's 64 different things. The biggest number you can have is 63. The smallest is zero. If you had six zeros, that's zero. Six ones is 63. And then any combination gives you the numbers in between 0 and 63. So you get these four chunks of six bits and each one of those chunks gives you one character. So you take the whole binary file that you've got that you want to convert or you can take some object that you convert and it will go through breaking it up into these three byte chunks. If it gets to the end and then the last bit doesn't equal three bytes, what it will do is it pads it with zeros. So just pads at the end and each of those paddings will be represented as an equal sign. So you may look at a base 64 string and at the very end you see one or two equal signs. Those are just the padding that are that's put on the end to make up the three byte group at the very end of the file. So conversion. Well, there is um, the toString method. So every number, so if I had a number, 17, I can call toString and then specify the base that I want. 17 in hexadecimal is the number 11. 17 in base 36 is the letter H. Now, I've, I'm using 36 here because that is the biggest base that toString will support. You can't do base 64 with toString. So you can convert a number to decimal, you can convert it to octal or hexadecimal. Those are the three most common ones that you'll convert a number into. But the two string won't let you convert something into some other base. Like if I change this one here, let's say base 2 instead of base 36. There we are. This is 17 in binary. So it's a 16 plus a 1. That's 17. So I'll go back to 36 here, base 36. That's the biggest one. If you do anything beyond 36, you're going to get an error with two string. So how do we convert some other string to base 64? Well, there's built-in methods, window.b to a and window.a to b. These two methods allow you to convert things back and forth between a uh, base 64 value and a regular string value. So A to B converts from base 64 into a string and B to A converts from a string into base 64. And this actually, sorry, instead of string, this should be encoded value that you place inside of here. So something that is base 64 and then you're converting it back into a string. Now, you can do it just on its own. So window A to B or window B to A. So right here, I'm doing let string B to A, A, B, C, and then I've got an, um, uh, an emoticon here, an emoji. If I remove that, 
I'm going to be able to see here what ABC is in base 64. So I'll run that. There we go. ABC in base 64 is this string right here. That's how it's represented. So if you took the values for those things, you broke it up into three byte chunks, you converted it into the six bit values, this is what you're going to get. So these each represent a number from 0 to 63. The problem with just doing this method is that it doesn't handle Unicode characters. If I go and I put back this value inside of here, you can see I've got this wrapped in a try catch. So it's going to try to do this, and if it fails, it's going to jump to the other line. This is going to fail because this falls out of the basic range of characters right here. So there's the message right here. So because that little smiley face falls outside of the characters in the Latin 1 range, it means that the B2A, A to B, isn't going to work for this. So this is an alternative that you can use. We're still using the B2A, but what we have to do is we have to take this, we have to encode the URI so it gives me a certain character, we have to unescape it to get rid of slashes, and then we can do the B2A. And then you can do the reverse as well. So that's what I have up here is these two lines. This is back and forth. And this is going to deal with things that are beyond that Latin one range. So the basic characters that you would be typing out. So if you've got anything like this, if you're using Unicode values, anything beyond the 256, then you really do need to use this combination of methods to do it. All right, moving on to something a little bit more practical. Uh, I have some examples here where what I want to do is I'm going to take an image, I'm going to load a an image off my computer, I want to display that image. So right here, this is my input that I have down here. This choose file, this is an input type equals file. If we scroll up into my HTML, we can see that. Input type equals file, it's going to accept an image. So when somebody clicks on this, they select an image and they say OK. That is going to trigger this change event. I am then going to look at the files array that comes back from this thing. So when I click on here and I'm selecting, let's say I select this rocket image, I say open. That's going to trigger the change event which is going to run my function. There we are. Now what I'm doing inside of here is I'm taking the file that came back and I'm passing it to the URL create object URL. This is giving me a blob URL. So blob stands for binary large object. This is a unique URL that points at that file. So the way it's saved locally, this is the URL, the internal URL to point to that image that's saved inside of, we go way down here, there we are. Uh, the rocket was this one right here. So we have, and I'll explain what all that other stuff is in a moment. So we have this blob URL that we get back from create object URL. I'm creating an image element and I'm setting the image source equal to nm and that's that blob URL. The thing that I've got highlighted here, I've cr created an image element right here. My HTML image element has been created and I'm setting its source to this, this string right here, this blob colon http example.com slash, that whole thing, that is now the URL, the source for my image, the first one that gets added. And then I'm adding a CSS class just because I've got a bunch of them at the bottom and I want to be able to differentiate between the different image tags. Create object URL, I made that into a CSS class up here. Create object URL has got the gold. So the gold highlighting, that is this first one. So let's come back over here. We'll go down right here. This is the image that I just selected using this, this rocketlarge.png. I'm rendering it right here, appended to the page, to the uh, main element on my page. Now something else I'm doing in here, this event listener right here. I'm listening for the load event on the image. And because these object URL methods, they're going to use up a lot of memory, 
I'm going to, after the image is loaded and it's been placed inside this image tag, I'm going to revoke object URL. This is just going to clear up the memory that was used to create this blob URL. All right, so that's version one of how you can take something from a file and put it into an image. We can also use the file reader object and get the base64 version. So this was a blob URL, blob binary large object. It's just giving me a unique string of the binary that sums up the binary data location. Now what I want to do is I want to actually take this file, convert it from a binary PNG into a base64 string. So this is what we were talking about previously. This binary file is now being rendered as an image tag, but this is a base64 string. So let's take a look at how to do that. We're creating a file reader object. Okay. We're listening for the reader to load. We're going to call this function right here when the file reader has loaded the actual image. And reader read data as read as data URL file. File is what we took up here. That was the first file returned by this input type equals file. So I clicked on choose file. I selected a file. It brought it back. It's now sitting in the input or a reference to it is in the input. I'm taking that reference and I'm saying, okay, read that binary file as a data URL. So what I'm saying is really convert from the binary file into a base64 string. When I get that back, I'm writing out the file right here. This is actually using the base64 string as the source for this image. And then I'm also, just to prove that that's what's being put inside of here, I am writing out here in this line my EV current target, that's the reader, dot result. The result is the base64 string. So let's look for base64 string from file reader. That's what we want to find here. And there it is. Base64 string from file reader. So from this point down, you can see it starts with data colon. That means it's a data URI. Images are capable of using data URIs to display images. It gives me the MIME type, which is image slash PNG and then base64 and a comma. Everything that comes after that, this is the actual data from inside of that image. And we can scroll down, 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 down to get to the very bottom. Oh, and here's one of those equal signs. So there was one bit of padding that was required. There was an extra byte or eight bits that was needed for padding at the very end to make sure that it was evenly divisible by the three so that we had three byte chunks. That whole thing from this all the way up to here. That is the string that's actually being assigned as the source for the image. So this is a base64 string. I can actually take this and I would do some URL encoding like I was doing up here, encode URI component. If I did that method on this string, I could then insert this into an XML file or into a JSON file and I could submit that to a server. I could pass it along, submit it as part of the form without worrying about the, the binary data. I can then take that and uh, use it a little bit later. The reason I have to do the URI encoding is because of these plus signs. Um, these plus signs will be um, encoded differently. When you're passing data through a, through um, an HTTP request, through URL, the URL encoding wants to turn this into a space. So that's going to break our encoding. So we have to make sure that we do URI encoding when we are going to submit it to the server. When we get it back, we'll do the, the decode URI component so that we get it back with our plus signs here just something to keep in mind if you are going to be doing that. If you do, do want to embed the JSON or XML file, you want to embed your base64 string from your image inside of your JSON or inside your XML, then you have to do the encode URI component and decode it when it comes back. Now the very last thing that I'm doing here, so this has been choose the file, write out the image as a blob, 
write out the image as a base64 string. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating an HTML5 canvas element. I'm putting an image from my local directory onto here, and then I'm exporting it from here as a base64 string, and I'm writing it out as a new image tag. Here is the blob value coming out of this canvas. So I took this whole canvas and I said, okay, give me the whole thing as a blob. I can do that. There is a to blob method, but there's also a to data URL method. And if I go to the very top here, we'll find that. Here it is. Here's the base64 string from canvas. So same thing, data, image, PNG, base64, and then a string. So all this, all the way down to the beginning of the next one, right here. And again, there was one equal sign for padding. So that whole string is the base64 version of what's on this canvas. And that is what I'm putting into a brand new image tag right here. So let's take a look at how that was done. Just very quickly, here's the HTML5 canvas element with the ID canvas. So I'm going to target that. There we are. I get the canvas. I get its context. You need the context to be able to put an image on it. I'm saying draw image. This is a reference to an image that I loaded up in the top of my script. It's the first two lines of the script. I'm just basically creating an image tag and I'm pointing it source to a file in my local directory. From position 00 to position 128, 128, I am drawing right here. This is the image that I'm drawing. After it's on the canvas, I'm doing canvas to data URL. This is the method right here that will take whatever's on the canvas and it will render it for me as a base64 string. That's where I'm writing out base64 string from canvas and that actual string. So that was the thing that we had highlighted up here, this part. This is the base64 string that came out of the canvas. I'm then creating a new image tag, setting its class to canvas. That's only going to give it the green border here. I'm setting its source as that base64 string. And that's why I'm seeing the same thing in this image as is on the canvas right here. And then the last little bit, this was the part that wrote out at the bottom blob from canvas. And this is the blob URL. So the to blob method and the to data URL. The difference between them is to data URL, it's a very quick thing, very quick process. It gives you back the string. To blob requires a callback function. So this is a callback function that's inside of the method to blob. This will run when the to blob operation has finished. It will pass me the actual blob, the binary large object. This is the, the blob data. And I'm getting create object URL from that blob. And that's what this last little piece is right here. This is the object URL created from that blob. So it's a blob uh, protocol for the URL. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff inside of here. Uh, I don't expect you to absorb this all right away, but keep it as a reference so you can look back and see if there's a different requirement if you want to at some point take an image save it as base64 string or convert it into a base64 string this is how you can do it and then once you have that base64 string the size is going to be bigger than the binary data there's no way around that but if you are doing something that prevents you from actually working with a file you can't attach a file you can't uh, work with the binary data for whatever reason you can take your images, you can convert them into base64, and then you can take that base64 string and put it inside of a text file, whether it's HTML or JSON or simple text or an XML file. You can use this text inside of those text files, and then there's no stopping you. You can do whatever you can do with text to this string. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, which you quite likely will, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.